Hello there. Welcome back to another Delightful Discussions. This week, I get to bring you a guest who is a community connection. He is a fellow Eagle in Dan Miller's 48 Days Eagles community. And I love sharing these connections because it is so fun to show all the amazing things that are happening in the Eagles community. So I am excited to share with you my guest today. I am curious, how many of you have thought about the fact that this isn't our permanent home? We're going to talk about that today with my guest, and I would be really curious to hear your guys' thoughts on that. So please feel free to have, leave any questions, but stay tuned for this conversation. I'll be right back. All right, guys, make sure that you have your coffee ready to go. I, oh, I actually will show you my new mug I got from my son. Very fun for Mother's Day. <laughs> so today's guest is David Steen, and he is an, a new author, actually. Very exciting. I want him to be able to share that with you. But he actually has created a pretty cool life for himself with his wife and kids, and they live on this amazing farm. And again, I want him to tell you about it because we are definitely going to ask him his story. So if you have thought about, though, that this world is not our permanent home, then you are definitely going to want to check out David's new book. So without further ado, I bring to you David Steen. Yay! Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, David. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Now, I was trying to allude to some things without giving away everything. <laughs> I did it to the <laughs> best job, but will you first tell us the name of your brand new book, and then we'll jump into your story. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I will just hold it up. This is the coolest yeah. thing ever is to be able to get a book written, hold it up to the camera and uh, show it to the world. But it's almost home setting our sights toward heaven. And uh, so this is my first published work and I've been writing for a long time, but I'm, I'm so glad to finally get it to this place and be able to get it out to the world. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that is such a cool thing. That tangible hands on like I have a book. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Congratulations. So, David, will you share with us your story? How did this book come about? Let's let's hear it. Lay it on us. Oh wow, that is, I mean, we don't have but thirty minutes, right? But this is <laughs> right. you know, I could give you the you know maybe two minute version or so. So you know, years ago, as as my wife and I married and we were growing our large family, uh, going through a lot of things. We had uh, two kids apiece when we got married, so you know, immediately everybody started calling us the Brady Bunch. And, you know, as we came together from our, our previous marriages, but, uh, but then we started having uh, kids ourselves and, you know, growing a career, growing a family. And so we, uh, we went from uh, four kids to nine kids over a wow. period of time. And so, you know, part of that was just figuring it all out, you know, not having all the answers and, but as we were going through life's journey and and just, you know, living it, people were just coming up to me and saying, and and by the way, I was I was really getting interested in writing at the time, mm -hmm. you know, probably about 2006, 2007 in in some work transitions and stuff. But people were just saying, you know, you should write down some of these strange things, crazy events, you know, that all of your family is as y'all are growing you should write these things down. And so I really just started writing then and, and just really got going on just writing, you know, little short stories about events. And, and then people would say, well, you should write a book. And so I, I think that just planted a seed with me, you know, to write a book. And so that's kind of how it got started probably, a, you know, 12, 15 years ago or so. Okay. I love it. And the website, which we do have in our description, is almosthomebooks.com, correct? Right, right. So this is a first of a series, potentially? Yeah, this is the first of many. <laughs> so I, you know, and I, you know, I'm a, this is on the job training, right? Learning yeah. how to write and, and get it out there and get more stuff out there. 
But as I was going through the vision uh, last year and really laying out the groundwork for this book and, and getting it to the finish line, I really just had several books along this theme of Almost Home. And so I had Almost Home. Uh, our, our original thought was Sojourners. And then we changed that to setting our sights toward heaven, give it a little bit, bit more definition. But I was thinking of, of, of several different book titles being labeled Almost Home because it really just represents the journey that, that God took us on to, to, you know, come to a realization about this life and, and how this is not really our permanent place and that we should, you know, in spite of the fact that we're chasing after the American dream and, and building, you know, a life for ourselves in this life on this earth, you know, that, uh, almost home really came to me, you know, when we got this farm that I'm, that I'm sitting, you know, at right now and just really, you know, God just impressed upon me the value of, you know, we were downsizing, we, we built a big house and then God told us to sell it and get rid of a bunch of stuff, you know, so we were downsizing. And so the idea was really just letting go of the stuff we heap up around us, you know, I think probably in our Western culture, you know, which is really the only thing I know, but, uh, but I hear that it's more prevalent in the Western world to, you know, just heap up stuff around us. You know, you see all these shows about hoarders and, and uh, you know, people just going it alone and, and building their castle and digging the moat and defending it with all they've got. But, you know, we, we have to stop and think about, where are we citizens of, you know, it's more than just this place. It's, it's beyond this world. And so that's really how I came to the title of almost home was, you know, we built our dream house. It was exciting, wonderful. We thought we were going to live there for the rest of our lives. And then God said, no, you need to go somewhere else. This isn't it. And, you know, that was hard. That was devastating for us, you know, to, to build that place, you know, for all of our kids to live in. And then God said, no, this isn't it. Mm. And so we arrived at this farm. It was like, I'm just walking around here, picking out the imperfections and the places wrong with it and the things we got to fix and, mm. and all this stuff. And it was just like, <laughs> God's telling me that we're home, but it's almost home. It's mm. not quite there. And so that was kind of where the vision started with all these different books. And so this this is kind of like my first one in the series of books for with the Almost Home title. And so that's why I titled it AlmostHomeBooks.com. Nice. I love it. So you kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, I have two questions. So I want to start with how you kind of talked about how it felt to move to this farm. So tell us us about the life that you and your wife, and I'm sorry, I don't know if I know your wife's name. So could you tell us your wife's name <laughs> if she doesn't mind? No, and that's share, great. share with us the life that you guys are creating based on this thought process. So, so I married a little storm. Her name's Katrina. So, <laughs> <laughs> and Katrina existed before Hurricane Katrina. So they named the big storm <laughs> after her. But she's my little storm. She is she is such a bundle of energy and I love her to death. She's my best friend in the whole world. But but as Katrina and I were were longing to to create this life, we wanted uh, certainly time freedom, family freedom, you know, kind of getting away from from all the trappings of this life. You know, I think one thing that we learned early on was, you know, we go we go through our life every day with work, school, you know, education, all the things that, that we put around us. And the majority of that is what society tells us we must do. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have to do this and we have to go to these ball games and we have to go to this program and that program and this church and all these other things. And so as we were pursuing this farm, you know, we actually built the house we had previously in a in a place we kind of settled for we loved it it was great it was a season you know that that god prepared for us but this farm we're on now really was the opportunity to get out get this place on 10 acres you know not a huge place some people think that sounds like a huge place but it's not <laughs> really but it's about all we can handle 
Yeah. But we wanted to we wanted to just create this place for our, for us to play, for the kids to play. And I say the word play because the kids were getting older. You know, I guess this was about uh, 2017 when we moved here. Okay. And and so you know, as I think back, the the kids were you know some of them entering their teenage years and some of them not quite there. But they all had an, an entrepreneurial mindset. And we've been trying to instill in that, you know, that d desire in them to uh, to create, you know, an experiment. So we've had every opportunity under the sun to experiment with uh, growing things, growing animals. You know, I tell you, if if anybody wants to be sure and give their kids the best uh, sex education they want, you know, you just <laughs> get a whole bunch of animals on a farm and they can... <laughs> To see that all they want in real time. No, there's a bonus bonus that we there's were not a bonus expecting. For you right there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we got to we got to see a whole plethora of different animals come and go on this place and experiments and the kids getting to go down and, and sit at the square in town and sell their crops and cucumbers and squash and everything mm -hmm. else they were growing. And so they got to learn real in real time what it was like to, you know, do the work and and sell things. And and so that was kind of what we're trying to do is create that entrepreneurial mindset and and freedom and space freedom to experiment and do the work and see what fruits come from it. I love that. And my second question to that is, again, you kind of alluded to this, but maybe if you could do, give us a um, pinpointed um, idea of what the message, the main message of this series of books is. Yeah. So, so when you get to the almost home theme, you know, it's about not, not grabbing hold of all this stuff in the world. You know, that's, you know, when you think of, of the world we live in and the, the ideas that we have of what we want and selfishness and, you know, grabbing hold of, of whatever we want and desire in this world. You know, as I think of some of the other themes of the other book titles I've got, you know, I've got one called Almost Home Treasures, and mm. it's about, you know, the things that we heap up around us uh, that that may not be, you know, what we what we need or, or things that are going to weigh us down. Uh, there's another one. Uh, that I have that's that's probably going to be a marriage book and it's going to be about, uh, you know, just, you know, instead of, of seeking after our own desires, you know, we're seeking after the desires of others. And mm -hmm. so, and then another one that I, that I really set out to write in the first place was, was going to be called almost home running from God. And that, that kind of goes way back in my history about, a, a, you know, a time that I wasn't, doing, doing things right and running from the Lord. And, but, but ideally when you think of this mindset of the book, it's about turning ourselves over to God, giving everything we are, you know, ourselves, our, our stuff, our passions, our family, you know, giving it all to the Lord and having a clear and, and vivid understanding of the fact that we're just stewards. We don't own any of this stuff. You know, God put us in in a place to manage the things that he blesses us with. Right. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we're just stewards. And the sooner we can grab hold of that idea in this life that we're just the managers. God owns it all. It's all his. You know, I'm sitting here looking across across the room here in, in the kitchen of a painting my wife uh, did for me several years ago. And it's one of my favorite verses. It says my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And, and I've had that reminder, you know, that so many times in, in a lot of my drives through the country and seeing, you know, just at these amazing opportune times, you know, when I'm struggling with money or how am I going to pay for this or, or how am I going to obtain that? And I, I just, you know, will pass a hillside full of cattle and I'll remember that verse mm -hmm. and I'll, oh yeah, my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. It's all yeah. his. And <laughs> end of that is just an amazing freedom. Great. Yes, I love that. And uh, we did get a comment. I want to make sure we share those. So John says, David is a good guy. Can't wait to read his book as I feel responsible for his writing at work. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hi, John. Thanks for joining us today. Yes. 
Awesome. Okay. So let's, I would love to hear um, any stories, anything that you can share with us that really brings home the idea of this message and the work that you, I mean, you've obviously already been working with this a bit, you know, it, uh, God works that way, right? He works in yeah. our lives in a way that he yeah. shows us, Hey, you need to be working on this. And so, um, can you share any stories that you have from this particular, uh, work that you're doing, things you've seen in your life, whatever that is for you? I tell you, when I when I was thinking about that earlier, and it's funny that John popped in here. John is one of the the my mentors in my corporate world, and mm -hmm. you know, John helped me jump out of a career in engineering where I was just sitting there in a cubicle, and and you know, it was a great job, a great place to work and be there, but uh, but I jumped out into the marketing world, and I had to you know see that the world was a lot bigger you know, than, than my engineering cubicle, you know, it's all, it's all good. It's just a different environment, but, uh, I can remember early on whenever I, I got sent out to do this presentation for customers as a product manager, and I didn't have a clue what I'm doing, right? I'm just like representing <laughs> products. I, I know the products, but it's like, I'm going out to, to a live event, you know, with people, not on a screen mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> telling them this presentation. And quite frankly, I was scared to death, didn't know how to do it. And one of the things that I really clued, uh, clued in on was learning how to tell my own story. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's, that's really kind of where I s laid the groundwork on being a storyteller to be able to bring this book, to bring the other books, to do blogging and other things that I love to do is learning how to, to tell your story and relate things in a real way that helps you, you know, communicate better. You know, when you can, when you can communicate something to somebody in a real way that lets them know that, that you're not just a robot, you're not just spouting off a bunch of ideas and, and thoughts on a, you know, on a PowerPoint presentation, but you're just really telling them a story. And so I learned that early on in my marketing career. And, you know, that, that's really where I, I think I started developing better is, you know, I, and, and it really lent to the idea of me being able to tell stories about our farm and our kids and our growing family. I had I had in, endless ammunition, you know, to be able to bring to those presentations and just tell these things. And so it was pretty cool being able to to just learn that in 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 real time in my career you know is being able to tell your story because that's where people really relate you know us you know i'm not jesus but that's how jesus did it right mm -hmm. he told parables and that's how people just really uh grabbed hold of, of his concepts and mm -hmm. uh you know that's a real thing is being able to to get to the heart of things with people and let them know you're real awesome i love it okay so uh, one question I have been loving lately, and this is a new question that I've been asking. I did prep you with it. Thank goodness. <laughs> but I am really curious. So here you are. You have a success of now you have a physical book. So awesome. Which a lot of people don't see come to fruition. Right. Right. I would love to know what is an action that you can see when you look back of amazing action, maybe a bold move you made that has led to your success today? I think it was, you know, I kind of alluded to it earlier, but, you know, when I made that move from engineering to marketing, you know, it was a big deal. Uh, you know, one thing as I, you know, I've been a probably my whole adult life been a book reader, you know, they always say readers are leaders, right? But, mm -hmm. but I think you have to take the next step. You know, I, I have so many books everywhere and bookshelves and and, you know, just personal developments, you know, spiritual development. But at the end of the day, you have to take action. Right. Mm -hmm. You can read books to death, but if you don't take action, they're of no value. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the books I picked up in about 2007 was Dan Miller's book, 48 Days to the Work You Love. Yeah. And went, went through that process, went through the thoughts of all of it. And, and it really hit me to the core, you know, I got to find my calling, my passion, what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so that helped me make that move from engineering to marketing. 
And then in 2020, you know, I was really, you know, deep and deeply entrenched in that again. You know, I had been writing for a long time in my product management role as, you know, at work, but it really wasn't as fulfilling for me as, as I had envisioned, you know, because I still had these stories and books, you know, in the back of my mind. And mm -hmm. so it, it really uh, opened up a door for me at the end of 2020, 2021 one started where, you know, I just had to make a move. I had an opportunity to, to take an open door. And so here I am, you know, moving toward, uh, you know, I've got this book published, got it done and got it ready for the world and got more in the pipeline, ready to get those out. And so you just have to make a move. You know, you can't yeah. just study, study, study. You know, you think of <laughs> professional students, right? And you think, oh, that kid's going to be 35 and they're going to have 15 degrees and never get anywhere. Right. Until they start getting in and doing the work and, and doing what they've learned. Right. So that's exactly. I would say that's a huge step for me is is digging in and, and applying what you've learned and doing something with it. I love it. I love it. You're so right. It is. You can continue to collect research all your life if you want and never do yeah. anything with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, OK. Final question before we ask how people can reach out and work with you is what is something fun, funny, or interesting that you can share with our audience today? Oh my, that's, I mean, we don't have enough time for that, but I, I'll, <laughs> hone in on a couple. I'll, I'll throw out one. Uh, okay. I, am, I am David the shepherd. So I live on this farm and, and we have uh Katahdin sheep and we're growing those and, we went from six sheep last year to 14. Now we had eight lambs uh, wow. this year. So we've got a growing flock of sheep that I, David, the shepherd am responsible for. And so that's, that's kind of fun and been really enjoyable to, to really just relate all the things you learn about sheep that you never knew. And it's real, you know, you hear all kinds of stuff about sheep, but, uh, but here's another one, you know, you think about my entrepreneurial journey. It hasn't, it hasn't just started. Uh, you know, when you, when I, I'll zo zoom the camera up here on this picture on the wall behind me. Yes. So this is, it says bistro on this picture. Mm. And so years ago as, as Katrina and I were just thinking about what we can do, what, what can we do, you know, to, to grow business. And we just had a lot of ideas. Well, one of the things I had for an idea was to open a sandwich shop. You know, I love mm -hmm. making sandwiches and, and, uh, you know, I may even have one for lunch. I've got, i got these, uh, wonderful sandwiches that I love to make kind of like a Philly cheesesteak. You know, I get, I get, uh, peppers and mushrooms and onions and dice them all up in the skillet and then throw yeah. some, meat, throw some meat in there and, and, uh, olive oil and drizzle it all over and get it all hot and yummy and put some good provolone cheese on top of it. Okay, and then, so you're making me hungry. <laughs> and then I you know, lay all that into a, you know, a wrap or a, a good bun, and and then you put all the fixings you want on it. Mm. And it's like my my theory is, you know, it's not really a good sandwich unless it's running down your arm. So all right, kind but, of uh, Carl's Jr. ish, right? Doesn't yeah. if it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't That's belong right. in your face. <laughs> so you know, I had that I had that envisioned, you know, years ago. We'll it. open a sandwich shop, but. You know, maybe maybe we never will, but I, I think that might be a takeaway is just because you're passionate about something doesn't mean that's what you need to do all day long, right? That's so true. You know, maybe I've saved myself from a world of misery by not opening a sandwich shop, but who knows? Hmm. Or maybe yeah, you know. can like invite people over for a delicious sandwich. Hey, for there that you go. One. Like <laughs> that could be, I don't remember. I think it was Dan Miller that talked about the guy that just started cooking meals and inviting. I can't remember his name, but do you remember that yeah. story? It's pretty cool. Yeah. And now people like are on a wait list just to come have dinner with him. Like, Oh yeah, that's cool. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. I had to no, throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. You know, I'm not a big sandwich person, but my husband is, and he's the same. He loves a good sandwich. There's something to that. Hmm. All right. Finally, as we wrap up, David, what are the best ways for people to work with you? I know you're starting some stuff up. Um, what right now is the best way for them to work with you? 
So first of all, to get in contact with me, they could, they could shoot me an email, David at almost And they can get on the website and check out what we're doing. We've got, uh, just got it up, up and running, uh, this weekend. And so yeah. that's at almost But, uh, you know, ideally our book launch is October the 3rd. Sounds wow. like a long time from now, but, uh, we're trying to, but it's going to be here before you know it. So, uh, the book is available on all the online sites, uh, you know, of your choice. And you can see that on the I've got links for that on the website. If you go to the website and click yep. on the, the book, it's there and you can see all the links. Or if somebody just wants to get a signed copy from me, there's a link for that too. They can go on there and, and order a copy. And uh, hopefully everything's working good. I'm not I'm not a website guru, but it should be up and functional well. But uh, but ideally, I'd like to hear from you. You know, David at almosthomebooks.com. Let me know your thoughts about today. And I would be thrilled, you know, to be able to, to jump on any other uh, interview shows like this or public speaking events, you know, so uh, be tickled to death to work with anybody, you know, to get this story out there and, and to, uh, to help people find uh, where they need to be in this journey. I love it. And we did get a comment from Jason. Great call, guys. Looking forward to reading the book, David. Yes. So let's make sure we say that. Will you hold your book up one more time and uh, buy the book? <laughs> buy the book. You got buy it. the book. Here we go. I love I'll... it. Let's do it. Oh, and we All got right. Gary Revis. Same. Yep. Thank you so much, Gary, for being on here. Jason, yeah. John, we appreciate you guys so much. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right. So We've got all of your information in the video description so people can get a hold of you. Um, do you have any final thoughts before we wrap up, David? Oh, wow. I just, I just really appreciate the opportunity, Mariah. I tell you, the, the, one of the things that I've really learned about getting this book out that has just blessed my soul, you know, beyond the money, beyond, you know, anything that has to do with notoriety or anything is that I have, I have put this book in several people's hands already that have read it and it just blesses my soul, you know, to, to get feedback from somebody that said, here's, here's how this touched me or here's how your story was just like mine or, you know, just, and it's been a variety. It's not been everybody the same, you know, so it, it, uh, it's just really blesses me, you know, and it was worth, worth every ounce of energy and, and every effort that I've put into it just to get, you know, one response like that. And it's just, I just uh, really appreciate that. It's been, a, it's been a good ride and I'm looking forward to getting it out to so many others. I love that. And, you know, I am um, going to piggyback off of what you're saying right there. I am challenging myself this year and I'm going to challenge our audience. I have a lot of authors in my life. David is one of them. Thank you for being a part of my um, circle, David. I want to challenge you guys. If you are giving out gifts this year. A fantastic gift to give is from a local author, an author within your circle. David, I am going to encourage people to buy your book and to give it as gifts this year. What a fantastic gift. I think it is one of the best things that you can do because not only can you read it, but then you can also give that to somebody else who you think might also want it. Giving books is such a great gift. Yeah. So I'm going to tag that along with what you're saying and say, get, get David's book, check it out. Make sure that you get in contact with him if you have any questions or you want to um, just connect. It's a great conversation. You can see David is very fun to chat with and just get in touch. So, all right. Well, I think that is it for today. David, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, glad to be here. So, thanks, thanks, Mariah. It was so fun to have you. All yeah. right, until next week, guys, have a great week and have live creatively. Week. All right, bye. bye, -bye.